Hey everyone, welcome back to the JavaScript Notebook. In this module, we're going to be taking a look at the concept of a variable. So where we last left off, we introduced ourselves to the JavaScript language and then just took a look at four of the eight most commonly used data types. And remember that was number, string, boolean, and undefined. And when we were doing that, we were actually using this reference to let and then a variable name. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So in our Cloud9 IDE and specifically in the folder for JS Notebook, please open up the data.js file and I'm going to scroll over and give ourselves a little more space here. And at the top of the screen, again, we've got a bunch of comments here to add to our notebook. And if we read the top line, variables are simply containers for storing data. And as I mentioned in the last video, the whole idea of a programming language, specifically JavaScript, is to take digital information from possibly an import, input source, process that information, and then generate some form of an output for our user. All along, that information is digital. And we have the need to store some digital information. So variables are the first and most simple way, uh, basic way of storing digital information. They're containers. Now, when to use variables? Well, we always want to declare JavaScript variables with one of three keywords, var, var let or const. var obviously represents variable. Let and const are new to the JavaScript scene as of 2015. So var was the initial way you just declared a variable and that was from the outset of the JavaScript programming language back in 1995. In 2015 JavaScript had a significant um, change or update to the programming language and the keywords let and const were one of the key features that were introduced. So that happened in 2015, also known as ES6. Now, if you want a general rule, always declare your variables with const. But if you think the value of the variable can change, use let. And that's coming from our friends at W3 Schools. So let's head on over there and just take a quick peek at the variable section here. On the left hand side, there's our four ways. And then down below, here is let. So take a quick look here. Variables defined with let cannot be redeclared, and they must be declared before use. We will talk about block scope a little later. Again, remember this is the very beginnings of a project based course. Students have just been working on HTML and CSS static websites. So this is our beginning entry into JavaScript. So we'll talk about block scope when the time comes. If we switch over to const, now the main difference here, they can const cannot be redeclared just like let, but const can also not be reassigned. And const represents constant. So if you have a constant value, you want that value to stay stored and not change, that's what you're going to use. So there are other differences here, but we're going to keep it to that um discussion at this point and at this level okay now another piece here is to talk about javascript identifiers or names javascript names or identifiers are used with variables but they're also used with keywords functions and so on so you we're going to see this in a few different circumstances when you have the option to name an item so here we're naming variables the, the name must begin with a letter and capitalization counts here. So a capital A is different from a lowercase a. Again, we'll get into why that's a little different, but very quickly, Unicode transfers the keystrokes of a keyboard into numerical values that can then be converted to zeros and ones. And that capital A is a different reference of zeros and ones than the lowercase a. So. Second, it could be a letter or it could begin with a dollar sign or a variable can begin with an underscore. Subsequent, char subsequent characters may be letters, digits, underscores, or dollar signs. Now, I want to go back to something I mentioned in the previous video. 
when you are naming a variable or for that matter any function variable or any javascript name please make sure that you are naming it with that uh, using a name that describes the intent of the space that the variable is meant to hold what um and again remember we used score or lives or is retired for booleans we used questions um and the name of the space set aside had meaning to the data type and value that was being stored there x and y not necessarily great names okay so let's go down to declaring variables this is declaring variables means setting aside or letting javascript know that we want space provided but not necessarily assigning a value to it so follow along with me on here on line 23 we're going to declare a variable named score and follow also following the if we feel like the variable can change use let so this is not a constant value we're going to use let here we're also going to use let for a variable named lives and this might be an example of you are using or declaring variables score and lies for a game that might later define the values for score and lives based on the level you're playing um, and so on so these are declared variables and remember or recall now those data types are undefined okay let's head on down to the next group here initialize variable that is declaring and assigning a value so let's give an example of that we're going to use the old school var num equals seven now a couple of things here as we type this out var is the javascript keyword identifying that we want space set aside for digital information we're naming that space num notice that after num i have a space and then equals then we have another space so it's good practice to leave spaces around assignment operators or mathematical operators and that's just kind of programming convention all right so we've established our variable num equals seven let's set up another one let's use const age to vote space equals and 18 and then end the thought with semicolon so a couple of things here um, i'm going to tab over to this two and put two forward slashes and age to vote is another good way of naming the intent of the variable 18. what is our intention to use with 18 in the program it represents age to vote now the way we typed out age to vote notice a is lowercase and then there's no spaces between the three words two is the t in two is capitalized the v in vote is capitalized that is considered lower camel case and that is often the convention used in naming as well all right next one down let's see um let's put in here let x equal five and let y equal seven notice again we have i'm going to move those spaces up here we have spaces around the equal sign and <clears throat> five is assigned to the value of x okay so again keep in mind that these are not great examples of variable names x and y but num age to vote score and lives are a much better way of naming let's head on down to using variables and i want to move my cursor to the end of the second comment here and it says note an equal sign is used to assign values to variables i want to add another comment here so the equals technically means 
gets the value of. Okay, so. Whoops. All right, let me get out of the quotes there. Okay, so for another example, if staying within the same program, if I now take score and I say score equals num plus three. Notice the spacing around the plus. We end that thought. And what's happening here is notice that score is not or does not have let var or const in front of it because score was already declared in line 23 above. This is very similar to if you meet someone for the first time, you make formal introductions, you introduce your name, hi, my name is Michael, but once you meet for that first time, as you have conversations going forward, whether that same day or later, you don't exchange those formal greetings anymore. That's kind of the, my way of looking at this here. Score was set aside value and established with the let keyword on 23, so now it's a known space for digital information. So on line 35, we're able to retrieve that space without the introduction again with let. And notice the equal sign here. The equal sign, take you could take that out and put the phrase gets the value of num plus seven. So now we've got to go back and say, okay, well, what's stored in the variable num? Well, that's number seven itself. I'm sorry, I said num plus seven. It should be num plus three. So num now holds the value of seven. Adding three, that means 10 now gets assigned to score. So the way you look at this equals is an assignment operator and not a comparison of equality. So we will get to comparison of equality later. That's using a double or triple equals. But right now, that one equals simply says, hey, I'm going to assign the value to score. Now, anything to the right of this equal sign, do your calculations, come up with one value, and then assign it back to score. Let's actually do that with another example here. Let's use lives equals score plus one. Same thing happens here where lives was predetermined or declared on line 24. At that point in time, the data was considered undefined in lives memory. Now lives gets the value of score. And another thing to point out here, score now on line 36 is not picking up the undefined value from 23. It's now holding 10. So score is now 10 here, plus one. Lives now gets the value of 11. So that's basically let, const, and var. One more time, let is going to be used when you feel like you're going to have variables that can change but if not, if you're not sure, always declare with const. That's a constant variable. You will see var also used. And var is used because all browsers will accept that. However, it's been a while since 2015, so now more and more browsers are ex um, have accepted let and const. So you're going to see those two more frequently. We will use those the most. But again, be aware that var is out there as well. So at this point, Let's head on down to the REPL and test some of this out. Okay, so I repositioned some spaces here. Make sure you're saving this and you wanna keep this code in our notebook because these files are going to stay. Remember the REPL is only temporary, so once we close out of that pane, it will go away. But let's bring that back up just to view how the values will change. So we wanna go down to layout, vertical split, Let's scroll this up a bit and we want to use new immediate window and here's our REPL. All right, so let's immediately set up with let's score. Remember to stay within the REPL, we want to hit shift enter. Let lives semicolon shift enter and now we've declared those two values. 
Uh, we want to declare var num equals seven. Shift enter. There's our const age to vote with our lower camel case assignment to the name. And that is going to be 18. Shift enter. Um, let x equal to 5. Shift enter. And let y equal to 7, I think. Let me scroll up. Yeah, 7. Okay. I don't have to copy what we had above, but I do want to just be consistent with that. Okay, now let's come down here and take score. And what did we do with score here? Score, let's assign the value num plus 3 to score. Shift enter. Lives. Let's assign the value of score plus 1. And I did all that and I hit enter too soon. So I'm going to see. Let me try this and see if I could copy all this into a new REPL. Okay, so if we do lose that, which I often have done, I'm going to go to the plus here, go to new immediate window, close out of the old one. Let me see if I could paste this in. Okay, and then hit shift enter here. And I want to console.log. And let's console.log score and shift enter. Console.log lives. And let's leave that here and let's just do one more shift enter. Console.log and Let's see, age to vote. Okay, we're gonna hit enter here. And let's see, we've got 10, 11, and 18. So let's see what happened here. Score, as we said before, took the number seven. Num was seven plus three, that gave us 10. That's our console.log. So score is holding the value 10, as you see. Lives, lives took score, which was 10, and added one. So lives is now retaining the value 11 and age to vote was not changed that is 18. okay i want to copy all those down one more time here uh let's see if i could go to a new immediate window close out of the old one okay one final thing I want to show you here, and I did, did really didn't have to copy that down, but let's make sure we hit shift enter. If I use x equals x plus eight, and then I'm gonna shift enter, I want a console dot log the value of x semicolon i'm going to stop here just for a minute now if you take a look at the previous line x equals x plus eight if you remember your algebra days that's an virtual impossible um, equation there is no value that will equal itself after you've added eight to it in other words if you were to solve that subtract x from both sides you have zero equals eight it's a false statement so in algebra, this doesn't make sense. But remember, we're not talking about algebra because that equals isn't a comparison of equality. That comes later. That equals is just gets the value of. So we're taking x, which was 5, and we're adding 8 to it. And the equal sign is saying, okay, assign this new value once you've done your calculations on the expression on the right. So x was 7, no, x was 5, plus 8, 
And we should get 13 if we do this right, if we console.log. So now there is our value 13 for x. So again, biggest difference here with variables is the fact that in order to introduce that space, we have to use let var or const to set aside space. We have to name it. And we name it using lower camel case, but we also name it using the naming conventions and a name with a purpose as well, describing what the intent behind that value is that's being stored there. And then this is the basics of setting aside and storing just a tiny bit of digital information so that we could process it and use it throughout a program without losing it. So variables are very powerful. So remember, let to var and const. When in doubt, use const. That's a constant variable. Let otherwise, var is the old school version from the beginning days of JavaScript. And I think that's about it. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at yet another way of holding data, something called arrays. So remember, the REPL does clear out. So close out of that, come back up and save. Make sure you're saving within the data.js. And my students, at this point in time, you want to push up to GitHub as you have always do at the end of each module. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.